Spartans, this is your boy Leonidas. I got a question for you. Do you like comeback stories? Rudy, remember the Titans. Your favorite sports drama, your favorite anime, when the main character gets knocked down and he goes within himself and does that internal dialogue to get himself back up, dust himself off, and continue to whoop up on the main villain? Well, I have something greater than that today for you. 700 ELO chess. In today's video, you're going to see the greatest comeback in the history of my chess career. I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you want to play me in chess, follow me at twitch.tv forward slash bladesong81. I'm more than willing to play anybody of any skill level in the chess battlefield in hopes to eventually get a tournament going for, let's say, 500 to 800 range ELO players just like you, just like me. I hope you guys enjoy. Peace. This game opens pretty standard here. He goes E4. I respond, going for a little bit of a, a Owens defense here. And we're settling in. We're doing things I decide to take because I see pawn, I take pawn. That's what you do in 700s. You see pawn, you take a pawn. And for a lack of a better term, he left it opening. He, he left it hanging. Obviously, he responds by moving his bishop out there. I respond, reinforcing my bishop. He castles. Everything here going pretty standard. I take his knight uh, because I got my bishop trapped. That's the first clue uh, that maybe this game isn't quite all that you'll expect it to be. He takes, standard. I reinforce the center, I'm all right. I need to take up center ground now. So I set up my three pawns in the center. He moves one forward. I decide not to take it because I want to keep my pawns from stacking on each other because the queen would just go ahead and take that and then I'm in a little bit of trouble. So I decide to lock it down. Decide to lock it down. But you can see throughout here, He's taken 31 seconds and I've taken 28 seconds. We're going at a pretty rapid pace here. All right, we move to check. I go ahead and I block. So I've got a pretty decent pawn structure here. Pay attention to this pawn structure because it's gonna come back to bite him uh, in the behind for YouTube purposes here in a little bit. So he moves Bishop out of the way. I continue to try to develop. In retrospect, maybe I should have been less passive. I should have moved it up here. But it is what it is. He moves his knight. I move my knight to protect this pawn, which I could have just moved my pawn here. But it is what it is. I don't think that's a blunder. I think that's maybe just a miss. He moves his bishop to attack my knight. I just go ahead and I try to reinforce. He takes, I take, which in all actuality, he shouldn't have taken that uh, because I'm blocking the light squares and he has a dark square bishop that can go in between my light squares. So he kind of gave that up for no good reason. But, you know, I gave up my light square bishop earlier. So all's fair in love and war, especially in the 700 range. All right. Things start to progress more. Uh, I have a 1.8 evaluation bar, which means I'm up, uh, I believe I'm up a pawn right now, and I got a better position than him, so with these, these knights, with these pawns here, this pawn in the middle broken through his pawn structure, I think I, I'm set up for a good mid-game right now. He puts me in check. I block with that pawn, because I know that pawn's get covered by the knight, pretty standard move. He moves it out, and now I start to do uh, a little Ooga Booga style, is what Gotham Chess likes to call it, for these 700s down here. I decide to chase. And I chase again. And I chase one more time. And my plan is to try to move here and pin his bishop in here so he would have to take and I could take. But... Being as 700s we are, we do make some smart moves every once in a while. He goes ahead and he moves his pawn to a4, blocking this. And I'm like, all right, you stop that attack. But what about your knight? 
So I move my next pawn to b4. And this is where things start to get a little crazy after these next few moves. He moves that knight back. I proceed to move my queen for I don't know why. I just wanted to move it. I think maybe it was because I was planning on castling this way, but in all actuality, I should be castling away from this opening I have right here. But it is what it is. I move my queen. He moves his pawn. And I move my queen to target this because I believe I want to take with this. He takes here. I take here. And then I'm winning. That was the plan that was in my head. So that's what happens. He takes. I take. He takes. He take. I take. He moves. Castle. And this is where things start to go a little crazy. By him moving that knight there, it's the beginning of the end for your protagonist here, Bladesong81. I move to take the knight. He takes that pawn. And I don't even want to play this next move. I take. He takes. I move my rook to e8. And as you can see here, if we move, go back a few. Moves. By him taking here. And then me taking here. This eval bar has steadily moved towards his direction. Unbeknownst to me, he started infiltrating and he started to collapse on my position. As Gotham Chess says, it's material, which is in his favor, and king safety. This king is relatively safe in this corner here, and mine is smack dab in the middle still. So I take, he moves, I castle, so king safety, but you'll see here, I actually lost a little bit of ELO, not ELO per se, but a, I lost a little bit of this evaluation bar by castling. I move, he moves, I move, and slowly but surely this eval bar is going towards his direction. I'm not making the most accurate of moves, which is why this bar is going his way. I take, he takes, he moves there, and he discover checks me, he discover checks me, so I block, instead of moving my king, I decide to block with a rook that can get taken by the knight. He just moved from that position. He literally, one move ago, moved this knight from that position. And I decide to move it back. This is the entertainment that you guys see here at the 700 range. This is what you came here, if you made it this far in the video, to see. He takes, as any smart man would do. And most of me, especially me at this point, I usually, usually would forfeit at this point. But I see that I have a queen here, and I still see that I have a rook here. I still have a chance to potentially win this game, right? No. I sack my rook for his knight, and I trade five pieces of material for three, and he goes heads, and he takes that with his queen. Awesome. It's great. It's great. It's great. Blade Song, this is like the greatest game that you've ever played. It takes. So now you can see this eval bar. I'm down 10 eval points, 9 pieces of material, Queen Baron down on my king, 
all he needs to do is get these rooks in these files, open files, and prevent my queen from getting activated. And it's pretty much lost. Pretty much a lost match for me. I move my king up. And my goal from the beginning when I saw that was to get my king running through here protected by my pawns. If I can keep my queen protecting this pawn here, I can keep my pawn structure intact for the most part. And maybe my king can do something crazy. That was my thought process. Not much of a thought process, not much of a chance being down with mate and seven on the board right here. Puts me in check. And for some reason, I did not run my king through my pawns. I decided to move it out into the open again. He activates his rook. And I realize I need to move my king out of the way. No, my queen out of the way. Because I realize if I leave my queen on this file here, he's going to do something crazy and he's going to get my queen or, and put me in check or he's going to do something stupid. So that's what I do. Oh. I move my pawn. I move my pawn. I let him take position here, potentially move in here. Uh, and I move my pawn. Why? Your guess is as good as mine. He puts me in check. I move my king again. And I move my king to the wrong spot. Because I can't move my king through here. Because I would be put in check. I move my king to the wrong spot. Check again. Alright, we're getting somewhere finally. He moves that. I'm like, all right, it's danger zone right now. So I move my king through here. And as you can see here, it's still mate on the board somewhere. Is a 708 going to find mate in 11? Probably not, but it's still there, which means it's a dire situation. All right, he moves to try to take my queen. I move my queen out of the way. He moves his pawn. I discover check. This is key. This discover check is the turning of the tide. Moving this pawn up and him moving out of here. He creates a weakness now. Before, he had his pawns and a structure right here where only one of my pieces could get through at a single time. Now, with him opening it up here, he allows for a counterattack to happen. Discover check. He moves his king. I realize I have to do something and do something in a hurry. So I think my plan was maybe to take this, put him in check again, and then see where we're at. He puts me in check. I do the only legal move. The only legal move is to move my king up this way. Which is what I do. He puts me in check, which is the right move to make. Again, my only legal move. Can't go this way. Can't go this way. Can't take. Only legal move is to push my king towards his king. Can you guys see where this is going yet? Move my king to g4. Still mate in 6. He can find mate in 6 if he takes enough time. But he takes 4 seconds. 4 seconds to move his pawn to h3 check. And you see this eval bar went from mate in 6 to... I am now leading. I am down at 10 points in material. And I am up on the eval bar by two points. That's how big of a blunder this was. One pawn move. A pawn move looking for a check, which in most cases, when you're up by a lot of pieces, uh, looking for a check is fine. But this p was a massive blunder. Probably blundered 14, 15 points on the eval bar. I do the only legal move one more time. 
the only legal move for me to make. I cannot go here. I can't take. I can't take. I can't go back. I mean, I guess I could take here. So it's not the only legal move, but for some reason I did not want to because I think at this point I saw my only chance at winning this game, which is to move my king to g3. And now it's mate in three for me, which means he cannot stop this. No matter what he does, he cannot stop mate. The only thing I need to do is move my queen here. So what can he do to stop this? Well, I think one, he has to, he sacks his queen, I think is the only thing that will temporarily stop that. So I think if he goes queen, take, check, he moves here, checkmate. Or, uh, I think it's checkmate. Oh, yeah, that's checkmate. So, where are we? Boom, 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 boom. We're moving, we're moving, we're back, we're back. Mate in three. But he doesn't do that. He does not move his queen up to chat to take that. Instead, he blunders mate in one. He moves his rook to attack my queen. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the greatest comeback of my chess career. Down 10 points in material with one queen and some pawns with my king against a queen, two rooks. I find mate. <laughs> 